Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for March 24th, 2020. Well, doggone it, we have an FOMC that pulls out all the stops and does unlimited buying operations and asset buying and includes a whole bunch of new programs to try and support the market and yesterday the market went yeah ho-hum and continued to move lower um, we were waiting um, hopefully waiting for the congress to get its act together and pass a stimulus bill that never happened and it didn't happen overnight as well so now we are still in the wait and see mode so how about we grab ourselves something to drink let's settle into our chairs and let's get ready for the morning market prep video for Tuesday so this morning looking at the market we have quite an amazing bounce back here this morning started in Asia last night the FOMC activity apparently inspired Asian markets a lot more than it did here in the US as a matter of fact we had a, um, a an over 7% rally in the Nikkei last night um, as Japan came roaring back um, on that FOMC stimulus now um, that that is even after they had to uh, the Olympic Committee postponed the Summer Olympics first time in history there's been a postponement of the Olympics there's been three cancellations due to war but the first time in history there's been a postponement that's gonna be a pretty heavy blow to Japan depending on how that long that delay goes but we'll have to wait and see um, overall though um, markets are moving higher higher this morning we have green across the board in european mar or in asian markets last night we have green across the board in european markets with the dax up um, as much as six and a half percent this morning really pushing higher on um, all of the government stimulus um, flooding um, into the market and then today we are waiting to hear from our congress uh, assuming they can get their act together and um, stop playing politics with um, the stimulus bill uh, we may actually get that passed today and that will put direct payments into the hands of US citizens and may um, kind of help levitate the market just a little bit more now one of the things I want to caution everyone on is to be really really careful in here and thinking that we're gonna see a bottom um, that we've a, a bottom like we've seen uh, a lot of times in the market a just a direct V bottom let's keep in mind that US in fact numbers are now approaching 45,000 and over 425 people have died so far so even though this is a nice relief don't expect that it's going to be a straight-up move as a matter of fact we have economic data coming out today that could hamper this a uh, little bit of levity this morning and remember we have a bunch of economic data coming out the rest of the week and as we move into next quarter we're gonna experience a lot of bumps in this recovery as these ugly ugly unemployment numbers and things like that are likely to roll in for the market now the reason I'm bringing that up is not to you know throw throw cold water on it on on you on just this nice relief rally it's just to bring some focus into what we could experience here in the market we could experience lots of fits and starts here where we power up and push back down and lots of back and forth in here as this recovery um, hopefully is starting to happen um, just keep in mind that um, the numbers are not going to be good out of this and um, what we want to want to do is avoid um, this idea of hitting the home run catching the perfect entry here and hitting the home run thinking that we're just going to rally straight back up and remember if we're going to be consistently profitable as traders one of the things we have to do is get comfortable with taking profits consistently what I mean by that and I wrote that in the morning blog and by the way 
anyone that wants to read the morning blog there is a link in the description right underneath the title you can go over there and read uh, the blog but the purpose what I what I um, said in the blog is that you know base hits base hits are, is what wins games you know home runs are very exciting everybody loves to see a home run but that's not what wins most games it's those base hits and so we're gonna have to work at being consistent in our trading when we get these moments of levity in the market to remember to take some profits um, if you're in these trades or in if you're in trades and don't let greed get in the way because we could easily see big whipsaws news driven reversals everything overnight reversals that are going to make this very very challenging so remember it's um, when you have that profit in your account it may be a good idea to capture some of those gains if not all of those gains and then wait for the next opportunity that this market will provide as we bounce around in this recovery so let's take a look at what happened here yesterday diamonds we ended up pushing down here we broke this support temporarily and ended up rallying right back up just holding on to it yesterday over 500 points down yesterday even after that massive FOMC um, um, action now this morning we're looking at a gap up now we've got a long ways to go here before we get bullish and as a matter of fact we have a long ways to go just to recover that 200 level here in the diamonds so if we even push up toward that we're going to want to watch that as a uh, potential resistance and keep in mind that we are still so tremendously bearish um, overall in this escalation and down that rallies back up we're going to run into lots of levels um, of resistance keep in mind the eight exponential moving average still diving it hasn't even had a chance to relax or begin to flatten out so keep in mind that we're going to have some trouble here notice that our 50-day moving average has crossed down through our 200-day moving average and most certainly will cross down the 500-day before we have an opportunity to rally all the way back there so a lot of work has to happen here in and even though we're feeling um, this wonderful rush of of relief um, this morning let's make sure that we're being wise following our rules following our trading plans and not getting too carried away um, in chasing around uh, the market this morning hoping to catch the perfect bottom let's take a look at the spy spy um, also um, showing a nice little relief rally this morning rallying back up you can see we bounced off of this 219 area yesterday a little bit of support right there but let's keep in mind in any rally back we have to deal with these resistance levels and as you can see we have a fairly significant resistance level right there at 234 so we're bouncing up close to there we'll have to see how we deal with that um, this morning if we can actually push through I would suspect if we can get that stimulus bill out that um, that would add some additional levity to the market and we may rally even further but keep in mind we still have all of this technical damage to get through so remember if you're long have some nice profits it might be wise to take some profits because overnight reversals and news driven reversals could be extreme let's take a look at the cues qqq also finding a little bit of support here yesterday putting in a long leg of doji but we held on to this price support now one of the things i did yesterday is um, i actually started picking up a position buying stock in QQQ I didn't buy the options and the reason is the option prices are ridiculous with the volatility being so high but I did buy some QQQ stock and I'm just nibbling in and what I intend to do is continue to build a position in here um, on this move so keep an eye on this it did hold that support this has our best chance of recovering a technical indicator here the 500 day moving average but notice we're gapping up here this morning we could easily find that area right in here as price resistance and fail so don't be too surprised if um, this isn't just the straight up rally we'd all like to see or that um, 
everything becomes um, rosy and perfect again uh, quickly. This is going to be most likely a long road back um, in these stocks. Let's take a look at IWM. IWM um, did hold on to support yesterday. That was a nice sign. And we're gapping up here this morning. Keep in mind, IWM is in a dismal position here. Um, lots of resistance above in price action. So keep in mind, uh, this will be kind of a choppy, difficult rally coming up out of here in IWM. But at least we're starting to see some technical support levels in price, and that is a very good thing. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now, the VIX saw a little bit of pullback yesterday, even though the market was sinking. So we had a little bit of a contradiction in signals here with uh, the VIX showing a pullback and the market also pulling back. But it is nice to see that we're finally settling down here in some of this volatility. That's going to help option prices here eventually uh, calm down. Remember, this push up this morning, um, if we can hold, if we can stop the big whips and swings, we will see that volatility start to calm down and option prices prices will start to come back to at least somewhat normal. They're still going to be elevated in price. Bid ask spreads are probably going to continue to be very wide for a while as market makers working to protect themselves. But if we can stop, uh, stop the big um, 1,200, 1,500, 3,000 point swings, um, that will help a lot in calming things down and settling the nerves of the market and maybe bringing some reality back into these option prices so that they are tradable. But be really careful here. The VIX um, likely to gap substantially lower this morning. We'll just have to wait and see if we get follow through buying here after the open uh, to continue to calm that VIX um, 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 in this process. Keep in mind that we do have levels in here. Um, remember, we could push down into this area right here, find some support, and still bounce up off of there. So keep that in mind. We'll want to watch these as we start breaking down. Will they serve as support or will they become resistance once we break below so that we can continue to move lower in that volatility? Let's take a look at T2122. It's the four week new high, new low ratio. And maybe, maybe for the first time in a couple of weeks, we may get a substantial lift off of uh, this floor down here that we've been bouncing around on and maybe get back to a little bit of normalcy. Um, it's going to take some time before we actually achieve some normalcy. But if we can bounce back up and finally get off of that, uh, off of the floor here, uh, get some movement in the market other than just outright selling. Um, we might finally uh, see the markets breathe the sigh of relief and a little bit of, uh, well, shall I say, um, comfort with the current situation. That's kind of a difficult thing to say when we continue to see numbers escalate um, as they are in the virus infection. And, and this is probably going to be long term, but just at least a little bit of relaxation here in um, the fear level of the market. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Now, our economic calendar is going to be kind of important today, I think, and we're going to have to really focus in on on what this market could uh, say to us because we're going to start seeing all of these virus impacts trickle into these numbers. Uh, this morning we have the PMI composite. Now the PMI is expecting, according to analyst estimates, a decline in um, PMI. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. And also, new home sales, they're expecting a decline in new home sales already. It's not substantial, but they are expecting a little bit of decline. Now, that would kind of fly in the face of the low rates and things like that, but it may be difficult for folks to be out shopping when uh, states, uh, uh, cities, and areas are in lockdown shopping for new homes. So kind of keep that in mind. We could see some of these numbers starting to affect or trickle in into the market really um, 
you know, shortening up any levity that we see in the stimulus plans. Keep in mind, we've got durable orders coming out uh, tomorrow. GDP is going to be an important one to, on Thursday with international trade and claims. All of those could be uh, pretty rough numbers as we move forward. And then that personal incomes and outlay. So we've got a busy week on that economic calendar. And as these impacts from the virus start to trickle in, we could see some... Well, some rough, rough trading around that, and, and we could get those news-driven reversals and really fast price action when those numbers come out, if they shock the market. Um, let's take a look at what we have on our earnings calendar today. We have... We have about uh, 72 companies reporting earnings, and we're going to hear from companies like Nike this morning. Nike reporting looks like they're gapping up this morning here. Now, I can't tell you if that's just the levity in the market or if they've actually reported. I haven't been keeping up on that this morning, but um, Nike had warned that they were going to struggle uh, making deliveries and keeping up their numbers here, um, so I'm not sure what will happen if if um, um, if it does still have to report it could be pretty awful yet um, we have um, carnival cruises and I just can't imagine carnival cruises uh, probably putting out any good economic numbers or or good re results uh, you never know but this morning it is catching a little bit of a rally here with the rest of the market we'll want to watch that this morning um, as it reports uh, CONN um, is another stock reporting today not a, a massively notable company but it will be interesting to see how um, retail responds um, here going forward. INFO is a, another um, company reporting today. Business Industrial, big wide bit of spread here right now. No information on that yet, but we'll want to keep an eye on that. And SCS is another stock that um, I put on the list as maybe something to pay attention to today, a partially notable um, stock to to just keep an eye on. So as we know, most everything is going to be really focused on what happens in Congress today. Will Congress get that stimulus bill passed? Will they start sending checks out to um, U.S. citizens? Um, and that's what the market is going to be focused on. Um, I think if there is any chance that they delay a vote again, we could see this uh, momentary levity um, in the market get reversed because the market could just throw a temper, temper tantrum uh, trying to get the Congress to, to get it done. So we'll have to watch, wait, and see. But keep in mind, uh, we could get really violent market swings around news um, as they progress forward and try to get through a vote in Congress. So watch that closely. We're not done with this bumpy market and it could be a little bit rough going forward. So with that, everyone, if this is the first time that you've seen these videos, if you could please do me a favor, if you could click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. Please keep in mind, guys, that I, I, I do try to eliminate all of the emotion and really look at the technicals, the price action, the events that may affect the market. And if you find that to be helpful, if you find that helping you on how you want to approach the market for the day, if you could do me a favor and click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment, that helps the channel to continue to grow. And I truly, truly appreciate every single one of you that do that. Lately, I have just been swamped, as you can imagine, in a market like this, answering questions and trying to help folks, but um, I will get back to answering all of those comments. Um, and I, I just, I, I'm so grateful to you guys um, and, and your comments are so kind. I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. So how about we take a look at a few stocks that you might want to be looking at, paying attention to. And let me show you what I did yesterday in a couple of trades. Now, 
Um, first off, I made mention that I picked up some NASDAQ. And what I what I did is I actually picked up NASDAQ based on a 15 minute chart. And what I'm looking for um, in these charts, and I'm actually gonna change to a, a different chart here. What I'm looking for is good 15 minute patterns uh, to begin to emerge. And although I had one of those yesterday, I had that push back up and a pull back and I had a nice bullish candle Candle standing up here when I entered the trade. The market, when we got that second vote from Congress uh, yesterday that failed, the market pulled on back. But I went ahead and hold, held that because what I want to do, and by the way, this is aftermarket activity in here. What I want to do is I want to start watching these shorter term charts and nibbling into stocks. I want to start picking up positions um, in hopes of recovery. Now, what I'm looking for here is I picked up a position in the queues. I also picked up a position in the diamonds because I do expect markets will eventually begin to recover. And the options were ridiculous. And as a matter of fact, the implied volatility is so high that holding a, an option for any period of time, you could experience such a, a large implied volatility crush. It, it just wasn't worth it to me. So I just picked up stock in these and I'm going to continue to work to build those positions as I get good entry signals in these charts. So this morning with this gap up, I've got nice profits in these two trades. And the pullback is what I'm going to be watching carefully. If I get a pullback and a nice setup for another addition, I will add to these trades slowly and steadily as they begin to progress. Now, as they progress up, I will be looking at bigger and bigger chart time frame. So I'm starting out on this 15 minute, just kind of nibbling in a little bit at a time. And then I'm going to move to the longer term. If I get an hourly chart set up where I get a nice position, a nice opportunity to add to a trade. That's where I'll add to um, these trades, starting to build a position. Now, I fully expect big whipsaws. This is not something that you want to do if you're not willing to hold through tremendous volatility, okay? And I wouldn't suggest that you try to pick up large positions. Just kind of take small, small positions in here and start building a portfolio. I'm also going to expand that out. I'm gonna be looking at stocks like Microsoft, stocks that I believe have a massive cash hoard that are going to continue to um, see great sales and things like that over time. We may have, uh, Microsoft could still suffer in the next couple, three earnings reports, I don't know, but I may start picking up positions as they start to show themselves on the shorter term charts and I'm going to start with stock until I start seeing those option prices starting to come back some of that implied volatility come out of these options I'm probably going to avoid a lot of those because they are so incredibly um, expensive right now with a massive directional implied volatility crush that could happen so uh, be really, really careful with those. But I'm going to start looking at things like this and start working to build those positions. I'll also be focusing on stocks that provide really good uh, dividend returns, you know, such as maybe AT&T getting a 7% annual dividend yield. I may start picking up stocks like that. Um, just looking to build a, a portfolio of um, good quality stocks that I think have a pretty good chance of recovering um, slowly in this market. And then I'll be building back into those options trades as that implied volatility begins to um, settle down and come back to some normal normal ranges that, that make it uh, much easier to trade. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I hope you got something out of this video this morning. Everyone take care. We'll talk to you all bright and early Wednesday morning. Have an awesome day.